let's talk about buildings, like actual physical structure. Yep. What are some nuances, some differences that you've seen being in these different markets? I think there's a lot more of the older, early 1900s builds in Chicago, especially on the north and south side. In the suburbs here, things started getting built for the most part in the 60s, 70s, and then expanded in the 80s and 90s. So I think similar as far as the suburban markets, because markets like Cincinnati, Indianapolis, they have a lot of those 60s to 80s builds out there, but their downtown markets aren't as built up as Chicago is. So Chicago has a lot more properties, especially throughout the city proper. And most of those were built in the you know 1900s, early to mid 1900s. So I think you have less of a concern in some of those other markets where you know plumbing might be 100 years old, electric might be 60 or 80 years old. Um, but here, most of the plumbing in those buildings have been updated, I would say, or at least the risers have been replaced. So it's just different. I don't think one's necessarily better than the other. It's just a little bit different. Got it. Real quick, like let's take your Columbus building. If you if you had to describe that area where you, I don't know where you are in Columbus, but what what Chicago neighborhood cl- closely mimics that area? Like for our listeners to get an idea of like what what Chicago neighborhood would you tag that as? Yeah, so I'm a South Sider, so I'm going to say it's a kind of Tinley Parkish type feel. Um, it's right outside Cincinnati. Actually, it's a town called Milford, and that's a 36 unit 1980s build. And I know, you know, the Southwest suburbs had a lot of properties built in the 80s. So I'd say kind of a Tinley Park, Oak Lawn, Chicago Ridgefield 